So continuing with this painting, what I'm going to do is to use acrylic glazing liquid. Uh, this has dried. So now to make some of the um, elements that allow me to improve on the colors of this nice sunrise. I mean, you can see, you can do it several different ways. I'm just going to add, you know, the glazing medium. And then we're gonna use a large brush. And this is going to help me move the acrylic better. In some areas, I just want to add orange over blue without blending. It's not gonna blend because it's already dry. So this is what uh, I'm using a large brush and I'm just using this glazing medium on top of the dried acrylic. And you know, you can go ahead and do the whole painting or you can do different areas at a time. We're gonna start with the improving the sensation of the sky. I felt it was too bland and um, probably too um, orange. So to make this area pop even more, I'm, I'm going to use, and, and again, sort of clean your brush because the glazing medium is also acrylic and it could ruin your brush. Anyway, uh, so what I was saying is I'm created some sort of a dusty blue to put it on the top of this painting and this kind of dusty blue is made with alizarin crimson just a tiny bit the ultramarine blue and the viridian green with a lot of white so this is what i mean by a dusty dusty blue it's, it's sort of a turquoise but it does have a hint of the red in there so let's see if this is gonna work. So I'm just gonna add it on top here of this painting and just slightly, you can see how with a glazing medium, I am able to sort of move this color in a nicer way. Though it almost feels like, like a oil painting instead of acrylic. And it's one of the things I like about it. I, don't uh, know about other brands. I'm so sure that other brands do well, but I know the golden brands. And <laughs> once you once you know one brand that works, why change it? Uh, so that's why I showed you the the golden. That's the one I use. I think that gives a better sense of the sky. There was also this kind of a dusty dusty blue just on top of this uh, area that was getting some light and this dusty blue now it's it's going to be a little bit more I mean this is the sky but these are kind of clouds so with this kind of blue I just added a, a little bit to my mix I just added a little bit of the red um, so it's probably too dark and that's why I like you to watch how I am trying it testing it and just making these clouds these clouds were also a little bit more less blue and more kind of dirty color now this is too close to what i used here for the skyline so i'm going to use just white into that mix that i had and the mix has more red on one side and more of the uh, blue that I created again with viridian green and ultramarine blue and I think this is gonna be It is nicer. It is dirty. It's not as clean as it was before and because these are clouds uh, they they look too um, flat um, I mean you can You can still make it out that they they are clouds even if they are a bit flatter, but I just prefer to make sure that what we're seeing is pleasing to you, to your viewer, and, and here. So, so there were some, these were clouds, and, and these behind the trees were clouds. I hope you see the difference between what we had before and this kind of dusty, it's a light purple color, but because there's green in there, it also gives a little bit more of that dusty, um, 
not very bright color of these clouds. And we're gonna come back with sky here. This is what was bothering me yesterday when I was working on this painting, that the clouds seem to have invaded the horizon. And you know, that can happen, but I thought for this painting, it wasn't really working very well. So, so now that we have these sort of cloudy areas, I want to make sure that that top area is a little bit um, softer. So what am I gonna do is just uh, clean the brush a little bit. It still has some of the paint. And let's see if this works. Just adding it, because there's glazing medium in there, I can, I can move the paint and, and make it look more like a cloudy, cloudy area of the sky. And definitely here in the bottom. Now, you probably have already noticed I'm using a quite a large brush. That's on purpose. I don't want to go into details. By making this darker than it was yesterday and changing a little bit of these colors, it's starting to look a bit more uh, what I wanted it to look like. So before I go and work a little bit on the orange accents, I want to work on the blue of the reflection of the sea because if the if we change the sky, the reflection should be bluer. And that was what was bothering me a bit yesterday. I thought this looked weird, kind of very orange. And there's nothing wrong with an orange um, sea or water, but I just wanted to make it different, different in color. So I have that dusty blue. I am just going to wipe the brush and dunk it in water off camera, just to make sure that I don't have remnants of color, that these are very nice brushes. My sister gave them to me as a gift. It was a surprise gift. I think it was about <laughs> maybe 10 years ago or six or 10 years ago. And I, they're like new, I use them a lot, but I take care of them. I use them also for oil paintings. Uh, the brand is Royal and Langnickel. It doesn't even have a size. It was a special set with all brushes were this size and there were different kinds of, of uh, hairs. I, for the acrylics and for the water-based oils that I use, the synthetics really work very well. So I've made a greenish kind of with viridian green, ultramarine blue, and titanium white. A lot of titanium white. This kind of greenish color. And I'm just going to gently uh, put it in some of these areas. The, the, the water, it's, it should be uh, greener than the sky. I mean, more like a teal color. And, and as you can see, even though I did apply the glazing medium, uh, it, I applied more on the top and the way that I'm using the brush and applying the paint is allowing me to not blend as I did here, but just apply the paint. I also made in sort of a similar brightness, but this is bluer. This has less of the viridian green. And we're going to go, as we go farther away, there's less definition in the water. So this definitely will have some more of that lighter blue. And I think I want to bring, um, I want to change the skyline slightly. I, I liked uh, to have sort of a, an entryway here of the sky. So this is gonna be sky, you'll see what I mean. And so this area is gonna be a bit brighter. So we are doing this area of the water, as you can see, I'm just applying it uh, more gently there. And I have the two colors in my brush. So water should be straight horizontal. And we're gonna come back with some accents so for now, this kind of uh, blue, which is very similar to the other color, 
together with this one is is making the water feel like we're having some waves. Now I'm coming with a darker version of that blue that has a little bit less of viridian green, a tiny bit, I'm sorry, less of viridian green and a tiny bit of alizarin crimson. And that's gonna be for areas in here. Now I am getting rid of almost all the orange and we will be establishing some of that orange color later. Uh, the orange is going to be in some areas of the painting, but I thought it just didn't look quite correct before. Uh, too, too orangey and sometimes I have a feeling that it looks too plasticky. Okay, I'm dipping into two different colors without mixing them to create some of these uh, waves. And we definitely, by adding some of the darker color, which is the one that I used here, um, it, it will add the sensation of some waves. And waves are more notable in the area that's closer to us and, and less, less so in the area that's farther from us. So over there, I'm not going to make uh, too many wavy strokes and in the area closer to us, it's just slightly darker than what we have. Just uh, some, some hints of waves in here. And now but by the areas where we have some of the dark reflections, it's always um, a nice effect if the water is a little bit lighter close to the dark. So um, I think what I'm going to do now is change brushes, go for a smaller brush, and just uh, try to make sure that I correct some of the colors in the water to reflect a bit more the colors of the sky. Before I completely clean the brush, I realized that because in the edges we're not using that much orange, I'm just going to slightly brush these different colors, as you can see, they're not mixed, different colors of the blue on the edges, instead of having it too orange. And I think that's going to make um, the popping of the orange color on the scene uh, a bit more logical to our eye. And I think it's gonna overall be uh, looking nicer. I hope that you realize that the sky improved in just a few strokes, just a few uh, areas of working on the sky. That, that is a better sky and um, that the, the water is slowly improving. Uh, sometimes I do like to do that. Uh, sometimes I do finish a painting in, in one of the sessions. Feel free to go and, and watch other videos that I have in my YouTube channel. However, uh, what I was telling you is that some of them take longer, not only because I really don't know, I don't have a formula, so it's sometimes you see that I'm making mistakes and then I have to correct them, of course. That always takes time, but we learn. And the other thing that I was saying is sometimes, like in this case, I wanted to use the glazing medium Usually I like using it when I have some dramatic skies or, you know, dramatic areas where I want to make blue and orange, which are complementary colors. Or if I have red and green in some particular painting that I also wanted to sort of softly and, and gently move from one color to another. If you don't wait for the acrylic or the oil painting, to dry and you don't use glazing medium, the problem is that you get gray. The complementary colors create gray and that's probably not what you want. So I hope you can see this is a bit more purple looking rather than the blue we had before. And I think in the horizon, I want to make it a little uh, less bright or less 
a little more white in the horizon and maybe with a little bit of a hint of that color of the sky. So the color of the sky is the one that's yellowish, the one that is orange. So now I'm gonna use the other brush, which is still a large brush. And for the horizon, let me just try, I have made a combination of Indian yellow and titanium white. And I just want to put it in, in the horizon line. And again, this is gonna be like showing a little bit that the others are clouds. So leave some areas, some spaces for clouds, but then the, the bright, and I'm using kind of the tip on the side. I'm not using the, the broad area. I think this is probably too yellow. So I did make a rosy color and I am not cleaning the brush. So we will add this uh, kind of rosy color in here. And I'm adding it to, to the top of what I painted. So what I want to do is to sort of indicate a horizon that's far away. And I am trying to indicate that there's still some clouds in the horizon. So I'm leaving some of that blue that we had before. Now this brighter horizon, let's see where it takes us. I think we should be seeing a little bit on this end. And of course, you know, the clouds change. So by using this kind of horizon line on, on these trees, we, we can, you know, pop it in and make it look like it's the sky that's getting there. I think this is going to improve a little bit what we were, the sensation that we were having before. So we have the sky and just I just want to make sure here that where I popped in this new horizon, which is a bright, brighter orange horizon, we don't have blue in the bottom. And as you can see, it's the same technique of using the color of the sky, in this case, the, the brighter horizon color. I am using it to shape the trees. And it's just, sometimes you do need to do a couple of layers. Now these are bushes, so these are not, um, these are not straight, these are not buildings. So I think that works better in terms of the sky. We have now um, a line of what is actually the clouds. And so this would make more sense. I'm going to use the same. Although the reflections in the water should be slightly darker, um, I am just going to use the same to pop in here some brighter reflections. And remember, we had all of these uh, the same color orange. So I'm just making it a little bit more rosy color. And it's on top of the other and also on top of the one that I had just changed into blue. As you can see, because the paints dry quite, quite fast in term, terms of this acrylics, even though I did add some of the glazing medium, I am able to apply the rosy color on top of the blue and on top of what we had before, which was orange. So I think it might be nice to pop a little bit of that sort of rosy reflection in there. And here. So as you as you probably realized, I don't really have a formula. I could have done this from the beginning if I 
have a, a technique where I know exactly which formula is going to work, but I, I don't. I think sometimes, like I say, the painting tells me where to go <laughs> and what I need to do. Okay, I think we do need a little bit of an area here of waves that are going to reflect a bit more of that gorgeous sunlight. And the sun was right here. So we're gonna have, I'm, I am using so far the same color that I had in my brush. That was the rosy color I used for the horizon line. And then some of these areas are gently going to to have also that sort of a rosy orangey color on on the horizon as i mentioned to you i was going to go back on top of these and just paint what's happening is because of we have glazing medium and i am adding this kind of orangey color that's light it is mixing slightly with the blue that we had and is creating a greenish tint, which is fine. And like I said, the horizon, I don't want to refine it too much, but I think this is going to create a better sensation of waves and, and light. Okay, I believe that by using the cadmium red on this area, it made it a bit to I don't like it so I think I'm gonna just go back to that uh, same orange uh, color or you know if this is basically Indian yellow with white and what I'm going to do is just add a tiny 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 bit you can see of a lizarin crimson. I think that orange is a nicer orange for this area. See, it's more rosy. And I think the other was too much. Uh, the cadmium red, I'm not going to get rid of all of the cadmium red, but just on top of here uh, for the sky so that we have the basic punch of light is where the sun was rising. And I think that came out okay with the three strokes that I mentioned to you yesterday. And there's an area here. I'm just moving the paint. It's the same paint just here on top. So, yeah, the, I, I think by just adding these touches, it just makes the horizon make a bit more sense. And I believe this painting is probably done, except we just need, um, so wipe your brush. And I'm not gonna clean it with water because what we need is some areas, this is Indian yellow with white. And it's just gonna be a stroke of white where I see that that sunlight could be hitting some of these waves. And that can happen, you know, even not necessarily very close, but it gets wider as you see these strokes of light. I am tempted to just brush it mildly here in the horizon, mixing it. So what I'm gonna do is just wipe a little bit, not too much, so that I can move this paint. And you can see I'm using the chiseled edge just to move that a little bit with what I had painted. Because I don't wanna I don't want it to, to look too wavy in the back. In the back you don't have that definition. And I, I think those areas of light benefit from having a little bit of the other color in here which is the orange that I had just created for this area and you know if you see visually this is what happens with the complementary colors it, they just really pop 
in terms of the reflection. All right, I believe that we may need just a little bit of the pink over here. And that's what happens with water. Uh, you, I mean, you can really go for a long time and never feel that you're done. This is the more orangey color. Um, but if sometimes if you just did too much, you just go back to the other color. So I'm just going to wipe it. I think I did perhaps too much. I do like it. So I'm going to go back to the greeny color that I had created, which is Viridian Green, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and the uh, white. And, and just here, pop in some of, of, of these greenish color. There's a lot of colors that you can use as long as you know you you can see a lot of colors in these reflections and just don't be tempted to blend everything. I think this looks better. I think this is a, an improvement to how we had it before the glazing. Have you enjoyed this uh, glazing of this sunrise image and now we I think we have a better painting in terms of richness. I, I, I'm going to add just a little bit. I just thought this looked too dark. And like I said, it's, it's a play between brush strokes, dark and white. I do like to show some of the orange that we had yesterday in the painting. I think it does look good. And how about, I mean, I'm just making all of this up. I don't have now the reference photo, just basically had all of the water was orange. That's why I was having difficulty uh, because it just looked weird. Anyway, I think we can extend a little bit of this orange and, and pink on the water. So I'm just cleaning the brush and I'm dipping into the rosy color and you know it's just because i'm seeing the sky and i'm seeing that you know some of these areas could have a bit more of that and not precise and then with the more orangey one this is what creates the illusion of reflections and volume in in the water and of course there's less less definition on, on those waves and, and for the waves i mean there's a lot of people that are going to tell you how to paint waves with detail on you know the back of the wave and how the transparency is going i just go for gut feeling is it looking well do i like it um i think it does make a bit more sense and again, I wiped it and I'm just using a tiny bit of that blue in some areas. Sometimes just changing the color, but it has the same brightness. We call that uh, the tone or the value. Um, it just creates visually a, a very nice sensation of, of light, movement and volume. So you can do that with shading, with making your color more darker or by adding a color that's not the same in this case it's the blue by the pink and by adding it it's just creating the difference on the waves and here i just want to add a little bit of lighter color in that horizon that goes in there and as you can see, I'm trying to be as straight as possible. And you can use a ruler. Don't feel that you need to do <laughs> like I do without the ruler. Um, and sometimes I don't do it very well. Sometimes it doesn't really look very straight. <laughs> okay, I think we can 
finish this painting. It's uh, always hard. I think there's a lot of videos, you know, when do you consider your painting finished? Because it's really hard. I hope you enjoyed it. Join me for my next video. And again, this was done with the same palette we had yesterday, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, Indian yellow as my transparent colors. And the accent colors is viridian green. You can use thalocyanin in green, also called phthalo green or thalocyanin in blue. This was cadmium red medium and cadmium yellow medium. And then I did use the golden glazing medium for this session. Thank you very much. Have a good day and please watch some other videos that I have posted in my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.